Shadow Man Remastered was originally released last year on the PC. I took a look at it in a full episode of DF Retro, where we examined the history of the series and sort of delved into why I think it's a fantastic adventure game still today. But now, finally, the remastered version arrives on console. It's powered by the Kex engine, ported by Night Dive Studios, and I'm here to talk about it with my friend and colleague, Alex Batalia. Hey there, John. As always, anything Night Dive, I'm down for it. They make amazing uh, kind of new age ports of retro games, adding in a lot of features. And they usually respect the console or platform they're working on here. So I'm excited to hear how the Switch version is. Yes, so the Switch version is actually our primary focus today. We received code for this the earliest and had the most time with it. But the game is also arriving on PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah. And I did manage to get some testing in it as well, so we will talk about that. <laughs> but it is worth noting that this console port of Shadow Man is actually using the Kex 4 engine now, whereas the PC version was still Kex 3. I would imagine that that might be updated at some point, but either way, it's kind of interesting to see them transition to a new version of the engine with this specific release here. But obviously, there's a lot of options here to explore, as is always the case with Night Dive games. So Alex, what would you like to know first? Well, for example, I'm coming in here from the PC version that you covered last year, where there was tons of options, essentially, to tailor the game to look like the original as close as possible, as well as add in a lot of really crazy stuff uh, on the high end, kind of like we saw with Turok and Turok 2 back in the day. So what kind of options are you actually getting in here? Well, that's the thing, and this is, this is one of the reasons I think I love Night Dive ports, is that they actually tend to include options that would typically be reserved for a PC release, and that is the case that. here, right? So I should first note that uh, the options are identical across all console versions, so whether you're Switch, PS4, Xbox One, it's all the same. The only difference between them comes down to resolution, which we'll discuss in a moment. But for now, we're here looking at the Switch version, Straight away, you can see there's an FOV slider, which is always welcome, as well as the Very necessary. ability to enable HD textures. So let's let's actually go through these. So HD textures, then, essentially, you either get those original low-res textures from the 90s or these really <laughs> nice redone assets that I think look absolutely awesome and stay pretty true to the original vision, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's anti-aliasing, and Kex now has full uh, TAA implementation here. So you very very clean edges and in a game like this that's like all opaque geometry pretty much it works well uh, it works extremely well yeah yeah but <laughs> if you want you can actually turn it off <laughs> okay that's i guess that's fine for those kind of people that do not like the taa look and we always see comments like that so that is that's a positive i guess but i guess it could also have uh performance implications as well which is yes which we'll get to uh there's also ambient occlusion which is something that I'm kind of mixed on in the sense that, you know, I like AO, of course, it's important, but in these games that have large, flat surfaces and, like, just, like, huge planes that intersect, yeah. it ends up just looking like they sort of trace black lines around the edges of things, you know? I, that's exactly what I was saying. It looks like an edge outline shader where it's just, like, there's blackness in a corner, but it doesn't really make much sense. It, it's better for games with a lot more geo, I always feel. Yeah, I mean, it's cool they implemented it here in the engine, of course, but for a game like Shadow Man, I don't think it's necessarily that interesting to use. Yeah. Uh, but what is kind of interesting, and it can have kind of a mixed reaction, they also have the ability to toggle motion blur, mm. which, of course, you know, that's always good to have the option because it's extremely divisive. Yeah, that is a good one. I loved it uh, in, the, in the last couple of games that they put out, like in Turok 2. It kind of gave the low poly models when they move this weird kind of claymation look to them that I absolutely yep. adored. It is neat. Uh, it, it, of course, though, it applies to everything, right? Mm -hmm. It's a global setting. So all camera movement and everything also oh, yeah, has motion yeah. blur applied. So it's not for everybody, but it is optional. Uh, another one that I was really surprised to see, though, is anisotropic filtering, huh. which basically lets you set the value for the filtering at one, two, four, eight, or 16. And specifically in the case of Switch, this does actually have some slight performance implications, okay. which we'll talk about shortly. Uh, the big one, though, perhaps the most expensive setting in the game is, of course, shadow mapping. Yeah. And this 
This is really nice because essentially everything then can cast a shadow. So all light sources cast shadows in this game and you can have uh, multiple light sources in a scene. And it's what I love about this though is like when you're, you're running around in third person, right? Eventually Shadow Man has like a torch. Uh, you can charge your weapon at any point and each one of those things is a dynamic light. Oh, so crazy. when you're running down a hall and you hold your weapon up and you're charging it, uh, it actually casts a shadow. Oh my God. both from Shadow Man and the entire environment. Same with when you have a torch, right? You hold up the torch and like everything casts shadows. Yeah, I can imagine this is crazy expensive though. <laughs> I mean, just, yeah. you know, even if it is low poly and old school, just like full res shadows on the Switch. Yeah, exactly. And it, But it is cool. Like I love when you like fire a shot down a hallway and there's a lot of geometry there and you see like every piece of geometry cast a shadow mm -hmm. as the light source travels down the hall. Very but cool. like you said, for, for the Switch, it's pretty heavy. Less so for, say, the PlayStation 4, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then there's film grain, which is a nice option to have. You know, it looks good in this game. Yeah. But I have I have it off for most of the footage because it does not work well with YouTube encoding. No, no. It's good always to turn that off because uh, it would make the game probably look quite a bit worse at 1080p on YouTube. Exactly. And then lastly, we have depth of field, uh, which is typically used during cutscenes or specific camera movements. Mm -hmm. um, and it can look quite good. But in some situations, I found that the, the depth information seemed to be wrong oh really so like you'd have like shadow man partially obscured in the depth of field in a way that didn't look quite right so it's kind of a hit or miss thing okay okay so we got a lot of graphical options uh are there other options too and i would you know since you can come actually change a lot of these graphical options what is the impact on image quality in this game is it always running at the exact same res um so that's that's another interesting thing here. So this is especially something for the Switch version, I would say, where uh, dynamic resolution scaling is quite prevalent and it varies a lot depending on which settings you select. Wow, okay. So it tops out at 1080p docked or 720p portable, right? And it can scale as low as 50% on Whoa, each okay. app. So, yeah. um, but that's not to say it rests that low, right? It's not typically mm -hmm. that low or anything, but it can drop that way. But the clarity va uh, varies significantly, again, depending on which options you select. Um, for instance, if you disable pretty much all the options, you end up with effectively mostly 1080p when Not docked, bad. which looks very sharp. Um, and of course, if you crank everything up, it drops significantly lower and becomes more pixelated if you have TAA disabled, but enabling TAA, so this is an interesting thing. It sort of softens the edges and it's very, very clean. Mm -hmm. And in a way for a low poly game like Shadow Man, it actually kind of works okay, right? Yeah. It gives it this softness that that feels natural for, for such a title. Yeah, for the games like this, there's always like two things you can try and achieve, like a soft original N64 kind of look or the unfiltered, uh, like PlayStation early PC kind of look. And I think it actually works both re really well here without AA and with TAA as well. Yeah, I agree. And of course, uh, on PS4 and Xbox platforms, it's kind of different. So if you're on a base PS4 or base Xbox One, you get 1080p max with DRS. Uh, this is most noticeable, I think, on Xbox One S, where cranking up all the effects does impact image clarity. But otherwise, it looks very clean. Now, if you're on PS4 Pro or Xbox One X, then it reaches 4K resolution with DRS. And lastly, if you play on PS5 or Xbox Series X, it basically seems to stick to native 4K. But yeah, so that's kind of the situation with image quality. But of course, that also feeds directly into performance. And this, this is actually really interesting, uh, specifically on Switch. So, I basically looked at this from three perspectives. All settings disabled, all settings enabled, and my personal balanced settings. John, is this is this John's optimized settings for the Switch? <laughs> oh my gosh, it happened. <laughs> oh my gosh. John's optimized settings. This is a first, I love this. <laughs> okay, so, before we get into the actual numbers, I do wanna note for the audience, uh, I did actually flag the performance issues that I'm about to show in this video with Night Dive, 
and they have apparently found some solutions to sort of improve and fix upon it so it does look like hopefully this will be fixed either just as the game launches or a little bit afterwards uh, so do keep that in mind when looking at the results here okay so first i want to start with looking at just the game running with all settings disabled and that means basically everything except for the hd textures so what i found here is that gpu drops are basically non-existent in this mode and you generally do get your 60 frames per second but it's not perfect and this is a little bit strange because i did run into random little skips and drops in performance here and there and i kind of reckon that it's either cpu or memory related stalls that would make sense uh, though those are always the things on switch even yes. with older games for example i remember when you looked at turok on the switch uh it was pretty perfect but there was like the chance that it could drop and then discussions with night dive essentially after the fact we're like yeah we're pretty cpu bound in some aspects actually even though it's just turok you know like that's that's the way things are and that's, that's important to remember because i mean this is still running on a much more capable uh, framework right the mm -hmm. kex engine so it is it is a little more demanding this isn't just running those original games and even Not then those all. original games are designed for architecture very different from what the switch offers mm -hmm. uh, the switch is weak in very specific areas and i think that does actually kind of bleed in and that's what causes it um i did actually want to mention though that occasionally things would get a little bit dicey for reasons that seemed unclear to me and if you toggled an option off then back on oh yeah. it actually fixes it which again suggests some sort of a memory issue that's what i would think so too. yeah this is pretty much the kind of stuff that it does sound like should be addressed in the day zero patch so crossing my fingers on that i mean honestly by and large it is actually very smooth i played through a huge chunk of the game in fact nearly finished it almost okay. and it is it was mostly fine i would say um but if you enable all settings that's when you trigger gpu related drops and this typically manifests in larger areas especially like outside the asylum is one early mm -hmm. in the game when you're out here uh, or even just like this little area here like you know as soon as there's a lot of enemies on screen and there's shadows everywhere you'll start to get these drops into the 50s. And that yeah. definitely does rob it of some fluidity, I'd say. And I do think these are definitely GPU related based on the way the performance graph uh, displays. Yeah, that, that would make sense though. As soon as you have multiple shadow casters on screen, something like the Switch, well, it makes sense to say the least. <laughs> I think I found that it's, it's specifically the combination of shadow maps with uh, motion blur. Huh, okay, the, yeah. Th those two together seem to really hammer the Switch. <laughs> so <laughs> it's heavy. And thus I found the balance. So John's optimized settings. John's optimized settings. <laughs> In <laughs> this case, so I use anti aliasing enabled, HD textures enabled. I do enable shadow mapping. I use film grain, uh, though that's optional, of course, it has very little impact. And I use anisotropic filtering specifically at times four interesting that sounds like a very console style optimization john that's interesting it does and i found that using these settings it does typically perform very much like it does when using all settings disabled so it's generally Great. pretty stable um but the af thing is really interesting like this typically manifests in the largest areas with like huge flat surfaces and i found that going up above four could trigger more and more like minor stutters and hitches that just didn't seem to dissipate that's kind of amazing i wonder if something about just like bringing those mips in uh at a yeah. distance really messes up the switch i mean it is very low bandwidth so exactly. maybe that is interesting and it's not like you see it everywhere but it's like like in the asylum area again out front there i kept testing this going incrementing it and you know you switch it to four and then you could get it pretty smooth go back above that and it instantly starts showing the problem again huh okay and i only found that four or below seemed to mostly eliminate that so that is likely a memory bandwidth issue on how switch. was the image quality in this balanced uh kind of mode that oh i i think out? it's quite good honestly nice Okay, so let's talk about the others then, starting with Xbox One. Now, I started on Series X, of course, and, you know, it runs as you would expect, but 
I went back to the Xbox One S for the real testing because this is, of course, the weakest of the Xbox systems that it supports. And, well, it was flawless, essentially. I sort of ran through the first, you know, hour or two of the game anyway, and this is an area where you would see plenty of dips on the Switch, but the Xbox has absolutely zero issues running with all settings maxed out. Uh, essentially, the main thing you see is that when you enable all settings on One S, you do see some aggressive DRS scaling at points, but the frame rate never seems to buckle. If you want a higher resolution, basically just turn off motion blur. And that's it. And yeah, this performance is the same on Xbox One X and Xbox Series X. So no matter which system you're on, you get 60 FPS, you get pretty much the target resolution much of the time, uh, with DRS mostly visible on Xbox One S. And yeah, it's really, really good. It's the same as the Switch version, but clear and it runs perfectly. And it's exactly the same on the PlayStation 4 consoles as well. Uh, the base PS4 then runs pretty much the same as Xbox One S, but the average resolution is higher. Uh, and just like that, I tested this by running through a lot of different areas, looking for the same types of things that would cause the Switch version to drop frames, and it simply did not. It was flawless. And PS4 Pro and, of course, PS5 have zero issues locking to 60. So it's just smooth all around with all settings enabled. So unlike Switch, there really isn't much to talk about here. It's just kind of, you know, the settings really don't have much of an impact on the performance or visuals, really. It's just kind of a preference thing at that point. So yeah, that's pretty much the lay of the land uh, on the consoles for performance. It's basically perfect on all consoles, except for on Switch, where it requires a little bit of hand tweaking in its current version. But it sounds like there is a patch that's going to hit right around launch that will hopefully iron out most of those issues. Maybe not the GPU drops, but everything else, I'm hopeful that it'll be fixed. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I didn't even mention some of the other aspects, like the customizable controls. There's a lot of options in here. You can adjust all the dead zones and such and, you know, change your mapping on things. And it's pretty robust. And I really like the new control system where you can use the right stick to look around. Oh, that's nice, uh, yeah, actually. Which was not available in the original game. A bit the original modern. actually uses a lock-on system. Oh, gosh. Um, uh, which is fine enough. And But the thing is, though, is that using this new control scheme almost makes the game a little bit... Well, it's it's easier. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> it's less brutal. I love that. So how about, you know, this game actually can be pretty tough if you're not used to this, I would say, genre of games that is a little bit, you know, older, you know, designed around scrolling around a level, enemies that aren't always the easiest to kill. If you die, how is loading in this game? Okay, so there is loading upon death, but also when warping, and it's actually very fast, I would good, say. Good, good. Uh, it's faster than the original versions were on the target platforms, except maybe N64. I yeah, remember. that cart. Um, at any point, you can essentially pull out your little brother's teddy bear and warp to any place where you've been. Mm. Uh there's specific checkpoints that appear because the world itself is gigantic. Uh, it's it's a it's comparable to something like a world that you would see in a From Software game. And yes, they they were making games like that before Demon Souls. You know, you look back <laughs> at at stuff like uh, Kingsfield. Kingsfield or Eternal Ring or anything like that. It's the same kind of thing. But it's a large interconnected map that you slowly uncover and explore. It's very engaging to get around, but it's so large that you can't easily run from one end to the other so having the ability to warp is important and the loading is quick enough that it's not a problem mm -hmm. that's good to hear so getting to the end of this here everything you've said this seems like a really good version of shadow man awesome kex engine features surprising customers customizability uh, on all versions of the game uh but there are some still like nagging little issues in the end like that one issue that you mentioned essentially of where the performance dipped and you had to change settings again for it to seem like it was doing something different or i guess maybe a little bit of that perhaps cpu and memory related issues but otherwise pretty great yeah absolutely awesome and if you if you enjoy these old school style adventure games like this 
uh, I definitely suggest giving it a look. And honestly, if you want more detail on the game itself and more rich comparisons with it, I do suggest going back to the episode I did on Shadow Man last year, mm, which was yes. pretty in depth. I really it was tried awesome. to I love that video. <laughs> dig into that stuff. So I do suggest giving it a shot. But I think that's going to do it for this video. So thanks for joining me, Alex. Of course, there, John. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to let us know. Like, subscribe, ring that notification bell for instant, yes, Rich said instant, notifications. <laughs> and until next time, this is John signing off and Alex saying, Auf Wiedersehen.